Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of the Viral Podcast. I'm your host, Chelsea Lynn. And I'm your host, Paige Jen. And uh, thank you for joining us on this installment. We appreciate you guys being here. We do week after week. We just say thank you because we mean it. Time after time. time, after time. Who sings that? You can lost me, you can I will be weak. Oh, I'm fucking. Who sings uh, that? Fucking Cheryl Crow. Oh, I mean, um, <laughs> huh? fucking Faith Ma- Hill. Oh, whoa! Tina who sings Turner? that, Maggie? You know who sings that? I don't. S- Cindy Lopa. Cindy Lopa. Mm. Right. That was my next guess. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The Faith Hill got me. I will say that. Um, if you are watching and not listening, you can't see. But Gary's joining us today. He's right up here on his mama desk, dude. Cuter than ever. Holy! I want to squeeze his noggin right now. Don't do that. You'll hurt me. I forgot. Since I have this in my hand, I forgot. I plucked out my armpit hair to save for you. What? Honeys. Why would I want that? Well, remember I told you the other day that I plucked him out? You wanted me to see the deep roots, right? (laughs) Yeah. And you put a piece of paper. I had a sticky note, but the thing is, yeah, some... You might have to do some searching, but there were some, like, balls falling out of my armpits. Because, you know, my armpits have been smelling. So I'm, Hold on. I'm thinking this bitch plucked one. There's 40 hairs on here. Oh, my God. No, I almost picked out my whole armpits. Oh, my. Paige. There's, there's more than 40. There's got to be 100 hairs in here. Wait. You pluck out every hair? Well, I just did because... Um, my armpit smell, I was like, you know, this situation is deep. So I got some tweezers and started pulling stuff out because I'm like, I think there's like, sometimes there was like little ingrown hairs, like they would just go Uh stretch. So yeah, stuff was coming out like pus, uh, little balls. So I think it's toxic shit. So maybe start plucking your armpits. Wow, dude. It didn't hurt. Those look like eyelashes. Yeah, I see one deep root there. But if you see some crust in there, it might have fallen off the sticky note. That's what I wanted you to see. That's unbelievable. I thought you was going to pick one or two hairs. She picked a hundred. Oh my she picked a hundred, dude. Wow. Well, thank you for, sh- for, for that, honeys. Appreciate that. Well, how are you supposed to get the toxins out? Because... I think just like a cleanse... Like some sort of... I do uh, the Aztec clay cleanse. Okay, yeah. But I feel like that's not going to pull out toxins. Yeah. Maybe a coconut oil or like something to get... Could be. Maybe waxings? I don't know. Could be. While we're on the while we're on the kind of grid of like health and stuff, I would uh, recommend everyone listening, if you don't, uh, get yourself a house plant. Um, they increase air quality, uh, reduce stress. They make you happy. Uh, me and Maggie went to the nursery yesterday and got a bunch of, bunch of new house plants. Oh, they're the best. Cause a lot yeah. of mine didn't make it from California. And so I thought, God, I, I, I can't live without a bunch of, I want a hundred in my house. But even if you start with just one, um, you know, you're bringing nature into your better air quality, dude. Breathing is life. The so, spider plant, they say, is, like, one of the best to sleep by. It's yes. called the spider. Yep. To, like, yeah, to help your air. Absolutely. All of them, dude. Just, and I, and they're just, the ivy is so, you know, you're not going to kill that. So just, the just fact, get you a house plant. The fact that a plant can filter the air and make it better for you, that's a trip. The fact that, pl- oh, nature's so powerful. The fact that plants can do... I mean, just take a quick Google search of what house plants alone can do for you. It's incredible. Yeah. Grounding. Yes. A lot of people lately have been seeing, um, the going back to the copper deal we yes. talked about on here. Mm-hmm. So they'll put copper with their plants, like a yeah. rod, 
little Rod Stewart in there. Yep, Rod Stewart. And it will like triple the growth of your plants. Like copper is powerful. Oh, dude, Greg's talk. Greg was talking about putting copper sheets in our bed. And I was like, what are you yes. talking? I, I've never heard of that. He was saying that he has heard like something about you can buy a system or something where you have a copper pole out in your yard uh -huh. and somehow it is you bring it in like there's wires or something that you bring in and like attach to your sheet so you're getting the energy from that like while you sleep some, i forgot what it's called yeah well some people uh will put a copper rod stewart in the ground and then they will even have it go they'll have it stringing i don't know if it's copper line the whole way but it's somehow connected mm -hmm. from the ground to their bedroom and yes. either like laying under their mattress some people do copper tape and put it underneath their mattress like mattress when my sister had cancer she got a grounding pad she did under. that um that's a that's a really big thing benefits of grounding um <clears throat> Even, yeah. People put it in their swimming <laughs> pools too to keep the algae out. Yes. Really? Yeah. They'll yes. put like a copper screw or something mm -hmm. and stick it in that little basket. Oh, just bodily contact with the oh. earth's natural electric charge stabilizes the uh, stabilizes deepest levels, reduces inflammation, pain, and stress, improves blood flow, energy, and sleep, and generates a greater well being. Damn. Duh. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any sort of nature. You know, nature's great. Get it up in you. Um, while we are, I have not announced this on the podcast yet. If you follow me on social media, I announced it, gosh, last month. Um, we are doing a cruise giveaway on Tammy's pontoon party. Um win a cruise to the bahamas on tammy's pontoon party um we're all gonna be there Paige, B uh, maggie biffy everyone's gonna be there you could win um cruise for two one balcony cabin for two round trip travel to miami for two we'll take pictures on board you'll get a shout out on a live taping of the viral podcast um uh, and we have lots of fun things planned. Now I did, I teamed up with Fandium, um, to, I was going to do this cr uh, cruise giveaway regardless. And actually told my management, I was like, Hey, I want to give, I want to do a cruise giveaway. And they said, Hey, we've worked with this company before with other clients. Um, they're, they work with like charities. They do giveaways and like chair and you can raise money for charity at the same time. So your first entry is free no cost no nothing you don't have to donate nothing so if you just want to get on there and enter to win the cruise giveaway <clears throat> you absolutely can also if you want to if you want to donate to for extra entries every penny of your money will go to the second harvest food bank of middle tennessee so they work with churches they work with schools they have food drives um they do a lot i've tagged them on my instagram i'll make a i need to make a highlight reel of this um so if you say hey i want to donate 10 bucks for uh however many uh, 10 dollars will get you 100 extra entries oh and 100 wow. of um your Proceeds. money goes to that um uh what was i gonna say um but you still have your your one entry that you can without donating and if you don't donate and you do the one entry, you could still win. Okay? <laughs> Take your chances. <laughs> you could still win. Okay? Um, but if you want to get extra, you know, and then help some people out at the same time, that's great. Yes. It's wonderful. We should link it down in the description. Yes. We'll, on YouTube. We'll, we'll put that on there. Um, we have lots of stuff planned for Tammy's pontoon party. This ends November 2nd. So go to, I think it's fandium.com. I'll put the link in my the link is in my instagram um bio on my link tree i want to say it's fandium.com oh gosh i don't even know the i don't even know the website right let me hop to it fandium fandium um i'll put the link in there i cannot wait for this cruise i know it's gonna be fun it's gonna be some and i just don't know what to expect but have an image in my head 
I know. I think it's fandium.com slash Tammy. Um, F-A-N-D-I-E-M dot com slash Tammy. Um, I, that actually may be completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> Just try that out. And if <laughs> th- that doesn't work, then we got something else for you. Try that out. And if that doesn't work, um, go to my Instagram bio. Hold on. I've got it here. Tammy is Tammy's bar. Taunton. Hold on. I'm yep. Thinking, yeah. Fandium.com slash Tammy. Fandium slash Tammy. Free cruise, honey. To the Bahamas. You don't need a passport. Um, I thought we did need a passport, but the cruise has confirmed, I guess, since we're going out of Miami. I don't know. You, you, there's Something a, scientific. There's a way around it. We don't need passports. Um, so, Fandium.com slash Tammy. Get on the cruise with us. That's cool you don't need passports. I know. I thought for sure you would. Um, yeah. We're going to be doing live a live taping of the viral pod. I can't I'm wait for that. Nervous. Holy shit. I'm nervous. I'm going to be good. doing some stand-up shows. We're going to be doing lots of little activities. Not only with me. If, if I have an activity going on that's either full or you don't want to go to, Maggie and Beth are going to be doing activities. Pay, like We're all going to be doing something. So just come hang out with us. Please. I want to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Tammy's pontoon party. Um, that'll be fun. Um, let's see here. Ooh, you want to get into our little segments today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do two truths, one lie. I love it. Let's do it. Okay. I never got that sound bite from Brett. Oh, Brett. Oh, oh. no. Brett's got that. Y'all just do two it. Two truths, truths one lie. lie. Ding. Dude, we can just do the sound bites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just do Let's do it again. Two, two truths, one lie. Ding. Perfect. Okay. Um, Go first, Dennings. Okay. Let me pull them up. Okay. Two truths, one lie. Page is going. Here we go. I've been fingered at the movies. <laughs> I've puked in an Uber. And a homeless guy has threw hard-boiled eggs at me. Damn, that's so detailed. I knew she'd say that's so detailed. I'm going to say the finger in a movie theater is true. I'm going to say the... What was the second one? I puked in an Uber. I feel like that's true. I feel like I've heard you say that before. Is that the lie? Because your face just made a... When I said that, her face kind of went... She's trying to throw you off. Nice, Maggie. Thank you. For, okay. And I think the the boiled egg thing is is not true because why would he do that? But I feel like this is a trick at the same time. I'm going to say the hard boiled eggs is the lie. Wrong, bitch. I've never been fingered at the movies. I was for sure you've been fingered at the movies. Nope. And <laughs> the puking in the Uber thing, that just happened to me and it just came out of nowhere i never fucking puke ever you weren't drunk you were sick well i i had to get up really early for this flight like 3 a.m and i woke up chugged a bunch of water and then i got in the uber and i started feeling so fucking sick and and i didn't want him to pull over because we were already kind of falling behind yeah so i just freaking grabbed my yeti and just yacked in my yeti Yum. Yacked in my Yeti. That's a new song. Yacked in my Yeti. Yacked in my Yeti. Did and it have stuff in it? Oh. No. No water or anything, oh. thankfully. Yeah. But, dude, just puking in a Yeti mm-hmm. through a hole. Mm-hmm. And I think Homeboy saw me through his, uh, what's that? Review mirror. mirror. Yeah. Well, he probably heard you going <laughs> and smelt it. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, got that wrong, so... Oh, and the, for the hard-boiled eggs, mm-hmm. uh, me and my family, we, we would go to NASCAR every year in Vegas. Uh, of course, it happened at NASCAR. Well, no, it was at McDonald's. Oh. So, we were in Vegas at NASCAR, all, all of us. We walk outside of McDonald's. Here comes these hard-boiled eggs getting flown at our heads. And we're like, what the fuck? Who's throwing hard-boiled eggs? This homeless guy in the corner just so pissed off at us. Why? I don't know, but just chucking hard-boiled eggs at us for no reason. He just kept eggs on hand? 
Yeah, maybe a little schizophrenia had to do with it. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Why he was mad. But my stepdad had to go kind of lift him off the ground. Did did anyone get hit directly in the head? No, but that they were, would, they were cool. coming in hard. <laughs> Dude, hard. Dang, how many did he have? A good, a good solid dozen or more. How did he get eggs? He fucking waited for your family to come out. I know. <laughs> That's what's funny. I know. I know. That's How do you boil them? You can you can buy pre boiled. Oh, I but, don't like them as much, but yeah. But how do you get them? And then why waste your food? Maybe somebody gave them to him uh-huh. as like a nice thing, and then he's because you ever give people homeless people food, and they're like, "I wanted money." Yeah. Oh yeah. Dang, that's funny. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Finally got you after weeks, dude. You were getting my ass. Mm-hmm. Damn, you got me. And I knew that was a trick. And I should have went with my gut. Oh, God. Always go with your <laughs> gut. Always go with your gut. I knew. I knew you were fucking with me. <laughs> it's the worst when you don't go with your gut. And I thought, she's trying. This is too big of a. Mm, I knew it. <laughs> I'm so mad at myself. Let's go. All right, you ready for mine, bitch? Yeah, no. Mine's kind of food edition. Oh, yeah, always. Okay, ready? <clears throat> I've never cooked a Melodano steak. You always think you got me and you don't. Get <laughs> okay, ready? Know, what is it? <clears throat> I hate pickled eggs. I hate pimento cheese. And I hate sweet pickles. Two of them are true. One's a lie. You don't like sweet pickles. You don't like sweet pickles. (laughs) (laughs) What was your first one, though? Uh, I hate pickled eggs. Pickled eggs? What the fuck does that mean? Like Like, no dill on them? No, what's pickled? People will boil eggs and pickle them in a jar with vinegar. Mm -hmm. So it's like a big old jar of... Pickled eggs? Yeah. He making noise for mama. Fuck, dude. Now that's got me twisted. Because I, how would I know that? Pickled <laughs> fucking eggs. Ooh. Or sweet pickles. Oh, tweet pickled. You said you hate these? I said I hate, I hate pickled eggs. I hate pimento cheese. I hate sweet pickles. I may be trying to get you here. I get think- you a little... I think that you hate pickled um, eggs. Final answer. You hate that is, you think that is the lie? Oh, wait. <laughs> Fuck me in the ass. Okay. Well, you said final answer. So, no, so- wait, wait, wait. I got I got fucked up. Wait, it's two truths, one lie. Okay, so I'm picking this lie here. What's the lie? <laughs> hmm. The lie. Oh my gosh. Why do you do this backwards? You fucking weirdo. You love pimento cheese. So I guess that's the fucking lie or whatever. That's not backwards. In my brain. That's the that's the point of trying to get you. (laughs) That's the lie. You have a double get. I hate you have a game inside of a damn game, dude. (laughs) I hate pimento cheese. It's a lie because I love pimento cheese. I know, but you have a twist on words in yours. Like, Uh if I would have said, like, I hope the listeners understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you? So if I wrote, I love sweet pickles, I love pickled eggs, I love pimento cheese, you'd have to do, it'd be the same. You'd have to do two of those. One is a truth and two lies. I know, but I'm still trying to get through the eggs and the pickles, but then I have to go over to the love and hate part. (laughs) I know. I know. I tried to get you and it didn't work. So you got you you got me. Got you on your own game. I, I love pimento cheese. I know you love pimento cheese because you. I've heard. I can hear you saying, "Oh, I love pimento cheese." I hate sweet pickles. Any mm-hmm. any. I can't do it. I can't do them. They're um, almost kind of slimy. And I love eggs. I love boiled eggs. I love deviled eggs. I love scram. I love eggs, but there's something about pickled eggs i can't do kind of looks like a science experiment just sitting in a jar like that 
it's a bit much for me to be honest with you. So you got it right. All right, you got me. Good job. Woo! Thank you. Good job. Thanks. Guys. Um. Well, before we get into DM of the day, first off, do you have a DM of the day? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've got, I've got one. I'm gonna go ahead and announce Rock Fucker of the Week. Oh. Rock Fucker of the Week is Tony Solano. Tony Solano. <laughs> Thank you so much for interacting with our viral podcast social medias. Maggie will get you hooked up with a viral podcast t-shirt. And you guys can always go to viralpodcast.co and get your merch. Okay? Just a click away. Congratulations, Tony, honeys. And then I'm ready for DM of the day. What's the DM for the day, honey? Oh, we'll tell ya. What's the DM for the day, honey? What's the DM for the day, honey? I've got a good one here. You want me to go first? Uh Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah? You don't have yours pulled up? <laughs> well, I'm still over in my notes okay. from the Two Truths, One Lie game. This guy named Junior, who looks like, mm, he looks like he may be... A senior. In his fifth, or late 40s, early 50s. He sent me a DM, and it says, and I quote, and I quote, you ready? I love your DVD size areolas. <laughs> Some women <laughs> DVD sized. I'm not I'm not even done yet. I'm not done yet. I love your DVD sized areolas. Some women have men's nickel sized areolas, which is a turn off. They're basically all nipple they are basically all nipple look alike. Hershey's kiss on a flat vanilla wafer. And then proceeds to send me a Google image search of a DVD. No. <laughs> like, you're no. not going to know what a DVD Dude. is. Dude. Let me so I zoomed in because I don't want you to see his name, but. A DVD. And then proceeds to send me a DVD. I've never heard of DVD nipples. That's funny. DVDs are like fucking. Like five inches. Your nipples are nothing Mm-mm. like a DVD. No, you no. I actually have small nipples for the size of my boobs. The tit to nip ratio. Ratio. Is, the, it's the ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your ratio isn't DVD. <laughs> I'm more of the way for Hershey's Kiss. Yeah. He doesn't like that. No, he don't like that. Well, that's what I got. Yeah. That's hilarious. And then proceeds to send me a picture of a DVD. That's what got me. He should have sent you a picture of like a wafer with the Hershey's on it. He should have sent you every single scenario. <laughs> I know, not just the DVD. I want the Hershey's Kiss. I want the vanilla wafer. I want it all. Was this sent on Facebook? Of course. Oh, gosh. It's always on Facebook, dude. Always on Facebook. You should put a DVD next to your nipple and send it back. <laughs> Say wrong, bitch. I Kit. like that idea. This guy said, Paige, I've followed you from the start here in the UK. Rock fuckers, give us a shout out on the pod. By the way, looking smoking. Congrats on all your guys' guys' success. We hope we get a Tammy show here one day. And then, um, the next day. Paige, yo. I'd fuck you so hard. <laughs> I would give Brett a hard on. Oh my, the switch up. It's the switch up for me. Mm-hmm. And what makes people go back? They're like, that first one didn't work out. It didn't get your attention. It didn't. You didn't see it. You didn't. They they think you didn't. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I guess he did get me. I mean, he got you. He made DM of the day. He did the, make DM of he, the day. That's what he wanted. But shout out to the UK rock fuckers. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you guys. We love you. Thank you for listening to us over there. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to pick DM of the days where I know people have no clue even about the podcast and who... This is a genuine motherfucker who is writing me the most ridiculous thing in the world. Mm-hmm. Out of control. <laughs> and it's I always don't on ever Facebook. really. Um, I need to get into more Facebook comments. Facebook is where messages. it's at. Facebook is the most ridiculous thing in the world. <clears throat> but don't you get like uh, millions of people responding back to stories? Yeah, yeah. But that. But you will get some good DMs in there too. Some crazy scroll, ones. Scroll I mean, I mean the, these grandpas are what's do. These grandpas on Facebook, holy moly. 
And you have no idea how many grandmas take such offense to um, just people posting. Just the, the how do I put it? The older generation um, having a dirty mouth is the worst thing in the world to them. Saying anything that's not, you know, bleep, 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 bleep. they think it's the worst thing in the world. And they'll tell you, and I usually reply with, uh, fuck off, Cindy. <laughs> or something. Well, damn. Yep. Times have changed. I mean, it's... Times have changed. say motherfucker. It's my days. turn now, bitch. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. my turn. <laughs> you had your turn. You, I, you, yeah. you know, it's my turn. Our turn. Yeah, your time's up. And <laughs> well, you're going to have to... Yeah. you mean, got to lean yeah. down. Yeah. Lean down. Um, lean back. Hello. And welcome to... The Moo Moo commercials. Pumpkin spice lattes. Freshly picked apples. Terrible B.O. Let's face it. Summer isn't the only time we get body odor, okay? That shit's year round. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant for pits, privates, and beyond. Lumi Deodorant was created by an OBGYN who discovered body odor isn't just an underarm thing, you guys. It's an all-over thing. So she developed Lumi, a pH-optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to control odor everywhere up to 72 hours. So fall can be fresh. Listen, I've put this stuff in crevices, okay? I've got a lot of crevices up in my body. I've used it. Guess what? It works. It's like a miracle or something. And you guys, personally, for me, the best part is it's aluminum-free, okay? Baking soda-free and paraben-free. That's awesome. And it's clinically proven to control body odor better than a shower with soap alone. 12 hours after a shower, guess what? The average person has an odor level 6 out of 10. With Lumi, the average odor level is 0 out of 10. How about that? Wow. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for a new customer, okay? If you just kind of want to you want to dip your toe in there, see what it's all about. The, the starter pack is it, okay? It comes with a solid deodorant stick, a cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash or deodorant wipes, and free shipping. That's right, guys. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code VIRAL at LumiPodcast.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiPodcast.com and use code VIRAL. I almost can't even talk without swearing, come to find out. (laughs) Really? Oh, I I can be very clean. I can, but dude, it's slipping not in a it's not fun. Slipping mm-hmm. in a motherfucker. Well, I do a lot of radio morning interviews for like to promote tour. And I I might have even said this all the time, like beforehand, people are like, oh like because they because they're thinking, Oh, tr- tr- trailer trash Tammy's coming on, we gotta give her the she we're scared of what she's gonna say, but I, I know there's a time and place for things. And I do all my interviews as Chelsea and I'm very, I will respect the situation I'm in. And I know on live morning radio, I can't yeah. talk about eating pussy. You know what I mean? Like that's for here, you know? I that's keep, for common sense. Right. I, you know, I, I, there's a time and place for things. And so I'm good at switching it on and off when I can and when I can't. I'm all, I, even though I swear so much, I am, uh professional because i grew up with mormons yep Hmm. yeah absolutely oh god absolutely so one time i slipped up i remember what happened i remember my friend farted and i say you queef where was this at right in front of her freaking dad and he goes what did you say and i was like asked her if she farted wait how old were you freak maybe like probably like 14 15 that's okay i'm thinking you're like five but mormons and we were on a way to like a i think mormon trek and queef's not even that's a legit now if you just said damn bitch you queef out of your pussy 
okay. I can understand him being yeah. like, ma'am. But when you're younger and, a, and an adult goes, what did you say? <sighs> your heart drops to your damn ass. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Gosh. All you asked is, did you queef? That's a legit question. That's a scientific term. I know. Just hear, hearing what did you say what and you having say? to be like, did I, he just let it my go? My first initial thought was, damn, he knows what a queef is. This Mormon knows what a queef is. Oh, he for damn sure knew, knows what a queef was. Oh, yeah. He probably loved them. Are you kidding he me? He probably, probably loved them. He's probably Googling queefs left and right. Are you kidding me? Brett, I guess, asked his uncle. Is his uncle Mormon? No, just very okay. does not okay. No, Brett said, do you know what a queef is to his uncle? Because one of our promos from the podcast came up and he goes, no. And I don't want to know what it is. Oh, he, he like, wants to keep his mind pure. I'm like, how do you not? Well, I guess Maggie didn't. Damn. Well, she kind of knew about what it was. Yeah. yeah. She knew it was in the vicinity. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew it was a. A puss fart. A, yeah. Puss no. fart. Puss fart. I was waiting on that. <laughs> I hate the word puss. Uh-huh. And I've yeah. always hated it. <laughs> no. Just add the E to it. Puss and boots. Pussy. <laughs> but puss. The, a puss fart. God. <laughs> puss. <laughs> Even pus. I know. Yeah. Ooh, you know how we, well, we didn't talk about this on the podcast, but we talked about this a lot on Slits Only about how I, um, you know, I'm into like, I'm into like collecting celebrity memorabilia type stuff. Mm -hmm. I had a nightmare last night. I had a dream that I was at an auction and they were auctioning off a pair of stage worn dolly parton high heels oh my she was photographed in them they were real pretty they were striped like color like almost like rainbow stripes it had like pink blue like it was kind of like something crazy she'd wear Mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god i just want you know like i wanted them so bad and the auction started and nobody was bidding on them and the auction had started like six hundred dollars and i was like I can't have, you know, I was like, $600. Me. And they're like, me. <laughs> and he's like, all right, do I hear about it? And like, nobody's bid. And I'm, my heart's racing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to win these Dolly Parton, you know? And he's like, going once, going twice. And then I hear $10,000. And I go, oh God. And I turn around, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, well, fuck me. I can't get them now, you know? Yeah. And then I woke up and I go, that's a fucking nightmare right that there. That is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. But also, fuck that guy or girl. Because I've always dreamed about owning something, Dolly Parton. And so I guess that's why I was so excited in my dream. I'm like, oh my God, like she, ne- you hardly ever see. She like keeps everything. And and yeah. when we moved Greg into our, uh, into Tennessee, these movers, he came in and saw, did you hear what he said, Maggie? Uh-uh. He came in and like saw all my Dolly Parton stuff in the living room. He was like, oh, Dolly Parton. He was like, I'm, he was like, I moved her uh, a while back. He goes, I didn't get to meet her, but I, I moved some of her stuff. He goes, she has a huge like warehouse on her property. He goes, there has to be at least a thousand pieces of furniture. He goes, I, if not more. He goes, and wow. it's just, it's just dressers and bed. She uh, he, collects it? Collects, I guess. And he goes, and she has autographed every single one of them. That, dude, why doesn't she, what's her plans? Like, is she going to get rid of stuff? Like, could you get a piece of her stuff? Oh, I'm sh- I'm, yeah, I'm sure she will when she either retires for like a charity or after she passes away, I'm sure she'll do like a, she'll have that, you know, set up. I know she keeps like all of her, um, clothes like stage worn stuff so absolutely i bet she'll do that for for the fans one of these days but in your dream do you remember turning around like seeing a face or like of what it looked like oh. there wasn't a face but it was a man and he goes ten thousand dollars and i was instantly so because i could I, you know i can't yeah. bid ten thousand so i was i was so excited to get him for 600 so gosh i always wonder in dreams who are those people yeah. that are in our dreams but we have no idea you know yeah. well i heard this has been a while that your brain whether it's like a memory or if you close your eyes and try to imagine someone or in a dream that that person is a real person that you have seen in your life 
You can't imagine a face without seeing it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have had to have seen this face before to be in your dream. Yes. Mm -hmm. To be in your mind. You can't just configure something. But I've seen creatures. Yeah. And I've never seen these creatures in real life. Yeah. I mean. When I had my sleep paralysis. Well, that was the one time. Well, have you or have you maybe seen them in, yeah, I mean, we could go deep here. Have you seen them in your dream? Like, you know what I mean? Have they, are they, you know? Just this one time when he was hovering over me and I thought there was an earthquake going and thought a lamp fell on my head. Oh my, I can't. That was the only time. I can't even think about that. But, yeah, now that I think of it, it wasn't really a face though. Like, more of just like dark and sh- like shadowy man dreams I, are weird oh dreams i would love to study dreams yeah i wish they could plug us in and we could just rewatch our dreams the next day right and it makes me think what did i hear here recently i was either watching something or reading i can't remember but i thought oh i want to dig more into that like how your dreams are like different realms of your life like lucid dreaming no well i don't know i don't even know but like people are like oh are our dreams another lie it's hard to explain what i saw and i can't remember what i saw yeah, i get what you mean are our dreams just another realm of our life because like, we don't existence yeah because we don't remember so much of our dreams like what are we doing is that real as well? It's it's obviously real if it's yeah. happening in your mind. Like, and they feel so real sometimes. You know? It's like, like your consciousness. like and That's interesting. And I do think that they all mean something. For sure. And 100%. that's what they say too though. Like let's say when you die. Like mm-hmm. they say it can be like that. Like you yes. are still living and you're still. Uh, you're just like a spiritual yeah. being rather than being a physical being exactly and i think that they do all mean something at the same time sometimes i will dream just me like farting on the couch (laughs) yeah or or just me like going through taco bell (laughs) drive-thru and i'm always like what does it mean yeah (laughs) what does it mean that i've had this not this existing dream of me and you standing in a pizza line and we are never getting out of it you have had that? Yeah, and I've had it like four to five times. We and should... we're just always moving up in that line. Let's go get pizza. That's what it means. Start telling me these things. It's so So I know weird. where to eat lunch. Pizza. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Oh, we had this, um, when we were in Chicago last, we had this really good pizza. Um, that Portofino's. Was like, Portofino's, I think. It, had, it was um, pepperoni pizza, and they had drizzled hot honey on it. Dude, I picked up hot honey the other day at the grocery oh. store, and I go, I'm going to make me just a frozen pizza and drizzle with that hot honey on there. Oh, it was uh. the best combo. You guys, I don't even like pizza. I just remembered the fucking name. It was probably wrong, um, but it was good. It was it, it was incredible. It was so good. Like, I can't wait to go back to Chicago. I can't wait to go back to Chicago to get it. Gary, Gary, he's stretching. he's stretching for mama. He's stretching for him, mama. He stretched for mama. And I will admit, usually, like, I pick off most of the toppings anyway, but usually I like the white saucy cream. Like, yes. th- But this pizza was just like the pepperoni, mm-hmm. just the original pepperoni, whatever, was hitting. Amen, baby. If you live in Chicago, go. Oh, so God, good. I want some pizza now. I know, me too. Um. All right. Well, hey, should we get up in uh, get up in this shit and uh, smell something? Smell something? Maybe a little can of beans or something. I don't know. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. Hey, honey. Confused here. Me and my husband hear your podcast for a long time now, and maybe we missed something uh, in between the cracks. But we were just wondering what Maliki and that Iki <laughs> mean. Um. Let us know. Oh yeah. Well, sounds like you got it. Sounds like you got that Mount Leaky and Adiki, baby. Baby. Well, how would you explain it? We've already kind of explained it on here, I feel like, but yeah. Ed Bassmaster started this thing like twelve, maybe longer, I don't know, on YouTube saying Malt Leaky and Bartledu and he just has all these catchy phrases and then actually when we were in Chicago 
we picked up Maggie from the airport and she was like, have you guys heard Ed Bassmaster say malt leaky? And then I farted or something and Maggie said, you got that malt leaky in that icky. And now we just started like kind of going off from that, like malt leaky. Now you could add your own combination. Malt spinny. Malt, malt spinny. spinny. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Nothing. It is a dumb little saying. So he does this uh, character called Mumbles where he'll walk. They like record him like walking up to people in public and he'll just literally mumble stuff that makes no sense. And he'll throw in like all these different things. He'll be like, oh, the malt leaky, you know, blah, 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 malt leaky. And people are like, huh? <laughs> so he, he, he's been, he's been doing this for years mm-hmm. and we love Ed Bassmaster. If you don't love know, him, God, if you don't know who he is, please YouTube him. You will be so entertained for hours. Yeah. He is a, he is a comedic genius. He's freaking funny. But yeah, I've heard mostly the Bartledew. Bart, he'll be like, Bart, Bartledew. Bartledew. <laughs> he'll be like, Bartledew. Yeah. Like, huh? But yeah. my favorite one is when he gets people to say Malt Leaky. I know. Like back to him. That's my favorite. Uh, he's yeah. like, you know where Malt Leaky Street is? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, huh? Malt, Did, yeah. Malt Leaky. <laughs> so it came from him, but we just kind of. Yeah. Maggie pretty much brought it back up and mm-hmm. got the Malt Leakies. What really started for us, yeah, was when somebody, yeah, you farted and she, oh, you got that Malt Leaky. <laughs> you got that and, Malt and Leaky. And that icky. And we, we died and it's mm-hmm. been going on ever since. We say it every day. We have to. I can't stop. It's almost like when I was editing my last YouTube video, I said malt leaky. And I even was recording this guy um, backstage at Tailgates and Tallboys, like a 50-year-old. And I say, oh, you got that malt leaky and the leaky? And he goes, what's malt leaky? And I'm looking at this footage going, dude. That's I need fu- to chill on the malt leaky. Fucking. We always have at least some sort of saying going on. Yeah. And some people <clears throat> usually, there are usually a couple that get upset when we have a word of the yeah. week or month well they can get over it oh yeah i think malt leaky's here to stay malt, malt leaky, leaky that icky baby is here to stay we've added the baby yeah baby. baby we've added the different words malt spinny malt you know malt leaky um malt we, smelly it, we added malt smelly malt Le- and we added the uh malt leaky in that icky ba- like it's a whole uh-huh and there's no meaning to chomp it. head staying they're all the words are staying just yeah. whenever when we can remember them. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks thank, for calling though, thank and you. asking. Yes, honey. Thank you. For, and thank you for watching the podcast. Mm-hmm. Love you. Hello. So I was just wondering your guys' opinions on something. And I also want to say I love you guys both so much. But uh, so I kind of suck at the dating scene. Um, kind of just giving up on finding someone. And my best friend offered her husband pretty much (laughs) and said that they'd both be willing to give me a baby. And in all this, um, we would be most likely moving all into a house together because single parenting must be hard as hell. But yeah, so what do you guys think about that? Because I'm thinking, do I have to have sex with him? Or can I just turkey baste it? If we do have sex, is she going to be in the same room? I don't know. Because I feel like it'd be super, super awkward. But yeah, just what are your opinions on that? Love you guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm thinking that escalated quickly. You just wanted you just <laughs> wanted a date, and then you got a baby, a house, uh, two partners. I know that did escalate. It, was she like complaining about the dating world, and her friends like, oh, take him off my hands, man. Yeah. Come give get you a baby. Him. You know, or was she talking about like, oh my times, you know, because apparently there's like this biological clock that a lot of women feel like times running up. I need a kid, and she's like, he can come. You know, like what was it? I guess I've never had dating problems that bad where somebody's offered up their husband. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, if you, they offered you a lot. Let me just start off right there. They're helpful they're, friends. These are the overachievers <laughs> of being a helpful friend. These are the yes people. These are the overachievers. Oh, she's needing help. 
by God, I'm going to come in her. We're going to have a baby. She's moving in. (laughs) We're parenting together. And we're actually a family. You know? Um, That's a lot. If you feel comfortable, if you feel uncomfortable with any of that, um, I think that's valid. You can say no. You you can totally say no. You can also marinate on it and talk about, you know, like, hey, how would this work? What do you, like... It, you know that would have to be a very planned out yes uh, bit that's about to happen because yeah i asked those questions is she gonna be in here when we're fucking are we living in the same household or are we gonna be on two separate sides of the house and you spend a night with her a night with me what's the schedule what's the what's happening with this kid that's um, the big thing that's the big thing what's going you know like yeah that needs to be and you know what this i've heard of this it may totally work out and be the best thing or it could be an absolute nightmare three (laughs) three people in a relationship yeah for real it's just that could be the absolute every relationship though working out or not working out i mean it's yeah i can see how it could be easier with two women in a household taking care of a kid sure you know helping with dinners just i don't know i feel like that could be kind of cool but then swapping the cock dude that's where it gets me that's where yeah and i think there would always be jealousy oh he's spending more time with her he's been i mean you're in a relationship with one person there's gonna be tension i feel like unless unless you guys are absolutely different breed i don't know absolutely yeah that's a lot to offer i would definitely take it i would definitely t- have some questions it's a lot you can have my husband she's like no i've just been having problems on tinder she, like, she said turkey based it <laughs> you want to get if you want a baby i, I think a turkey baster would work you think if you laid up if you laid back and put it in yeah, there because how were those girls trying to get drakes come out of the condom how what was the next plan i don't know i have no clue you know what yeah, yeah you know what i mean heard yeah. of that the where yeah i don't know maybe they were gonna turkey baste it up them but yeah he put hot sauce in there i know instead oh man Perks of being famous, I oh, guess. Man. You just got to carry around Tabasco and fill up condoms with them after. Yeah. Hmm. Why don't you just flush it down the toilet? If you're in a hotel. I guess he was like just testing her. Oh. Dude, you know? th- those girls will probably go to the wits end and turn that condom upside, inside out and shove it up their Ooh. hoo-ha yeah. with their finger. Mm. He's got to dispose of the whole situation, right. hot sauce it. Right. Yeah, man, you, you got yourself into a. They've offered you a lot. I would definitely be having a talk with them. Hey, what's the plan? What are y'all thinking? What are we doing here? They got the plan. They got that plan. They had that plan. Right, wait that, for someone. To, that's not no new plan. They sprung up. They've been talking about it. you've been in the works. Yeah, not knowing it. You're right. Damn. If somebody came at you like that, what would you fucking do? Hell. Well, no. they're just, they're nice people. They're trying to help out. So. You know, who knows? Ask him the plan and yeah. see where it goes from there. And the best of luck to you and your family, your kid, whatever. And your dating life and whatever happens. Best of luck. We love you, honeys. Love you. Thank you for calling in. Hey, honeys. Craigslist story here. So after college, I was looking for a new roommate. So I, of course, checked on Craigslist. This was like 2015. And um, I interviewed a Three people, two girls, one guy, because I figured a guy might be less annoying to live with, you know. Um, so I, he came to toward the apartment, and immediately after he left, my existing roommate said that he was just my type, and we all laughed about it. Anyway, he ended up moving in, being my roommate. He was my roommate for one month before we started fucking, and that was eight years ago. We just celebrated our one-year wedding anniversary. Anyway, honey, just thought you might find that entertaining. Love you. Oh, yeah. Woo-hoo. Ooh. Well, congratulations, wow. honeys. That's yeah. awesome. 
found your husband on Craigslist. You just never know where you're going to meet your significant other. What got me was when she said she was looking for a a male roommate because she thought that they would be less annoying. I don't know about that one. (laughs) Yeah, that one's a toss up. See, I feel like the dude would be more annoying. Yeah, because, oh gosh, I don't know. It just, I guess it just depends. Depends on the person, but I think a guy's, a guy's going to be maybe a little messier. Maybe, you know, maybe bringing people home. We've had, I've had a lot of roommates. When Greg and I moved, first moved to San Diego, we, oh my gosh, we've had one, two, three, I'm trying to think, several roommates, um, we had this roommate that he only lived with us for like, cause we had two extra rooms in when we first moved to San Diego and when, okay, where we're from, people don't really, at least 10 years ago, people didn't have, you don't have Mm-mm. room, you know, that's, so that's like a California, cause it's so expensive in California. Roommates. And Greg was like, oh, maybe we should rent out one of the rooms. I'm like, okay. So we put like an ad at his work and someone that didn't work with him but worked in the company um he was from la but would come to work during the week and he was making that drive to san diego and so he was like oh if i could stay with you guys during the week and go home on weekends type of thing and so we're like yeah let's try it out it was hell this motherfucker was so fucking annoying (laughs) he was kind of an older guy he was maybe like 50 um he would like Dude, I would be sitting on the couch watching TV, and when I saw him pull up, I would turn the TV off so fast, turn the lights off, and run to my bedroom so I didn't have to talk to him. Damn. He would basically tell you everything that you were doing wrong. He would tell you everything that you're cooking, you're cooking it wrong. Uh, He would tell you everything that you're eating, you're eating it wrong. He would tell, I mean, it was every day. He was a Cindy from Facebook? Dude. And I tried to make it obvious that I was annoyed. He didn't, he went, you know. Mm-mm. Should have gave him some hops. Dude, I would just be cooking and he'd be, I mean, he would just tell you like, oh, you're not, it was, it was oh, non. It, gosh, he was just a hover. He didn't stay in his room either, did he? He no. was always out and about. Oh, he had to hover. He, he should have called him a hoverboard. Yeah, it was nonstop. And after, I think he lived with us, i say we gave it a couple months. And I told Greg, I said, I can't do it. I cannot do it. And so we just told him he had to look for another place because my sister was going to move in and and take the room. Okay, well, solid story. And it was a lie because neither of them were, had, you know, but soon after that. Yeah, you can't just be like, hey, man, you're fucking in. I know. We're like, oh, or, you know, I, uh, my sister needs a plate, you know, she's moving. And he's like, oh, okay, no big deal. That's cool of him, though. Yeah. He that didn't like, part. he didn't like move in. Like we yeah. had, we had already furnished and he just would bring us like bag of clothes. for. So he didn't need to like, you know, but I couldn't do it. He couldn't even stay anymore. I couldn't do it. We had, uh, we also had this, um, you said you like more, you think the women would be less annoying, whatever, but I feel like you've only had the male roommates I've seen. Meg. We had Meg. We loved Meg. She was from um, India. Is that who you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Meg, yeah. Um, Loved her. She was from India and she was, she was married, but either her husband was working in a different, I think her husband was like working in LA. I can't remember exactly, but she lived with us and she was awesome. And she, I remember at first she would like, she was very shy and she was very, um, She didn't want to, like, do stuff in front of me, I noticed. Like what? Like, and I didn't know this, but, like, Indian people, like, eat with their hands. Like, even if it's not a sandwich or a burger, but, like, a hot meal, a hot meal plate, chicken Mm -hmm. and whatever, they'll eat with their hand. At least she did. They'll eat with their hands and not a fork. And I remember one time she was eating and, like, I saw her. I, I didn't think, I didn't think anything of it, to be honest with you. And she like stopped and she was like, oh, uh, and you know, she was almost Aww. like, I know she was almost like scared that like I was, I'm going to be judged. Yes. Or something. Yes. And 
I didn't ask about it or nothing, but she kind of stopped and she kind of explained to me that that's what they do and stuff. And she, she almost seemed like, right, like she was like nervous to talk to me about it or whatever. And I go, mm-hmm. I think that's like cool. Like I've never seen that. I didn't know you guys yeah, did that. I'm that's glad cool. you... you get to learn from her, yes. like her culture. And and that's exactly kind of what I told her and explained to her. I go, I think it's like I never knew that. I think it's cool that I learned something. And once we had that conversation, she was really cool with everything. You know, she seemed more open to stuff. Yeah, We loved her. I'd be like, teach me more stuff. Yeah. You know, that's so cool. And I remember when we moved to Escondido, um, we were looking for a roommate. <laughs> and we always use Craigslist, by the way. Always use Craigslist. It's now pe- now people use like Facebook Market for everything uh, for, really for getting like rid of stuff for roommates though uh-huh, uh-huh. Fa- facebook has facebook dating like tinder yeah oh, they would they will do anything mm-hmm. that anybody else is doing right <laughs> so um we had this one guy come over and tilly he walked in oh, his oh you said this oh who wants better sex and who wants to start having better sex immediately me well, the best way to get started is to go to adamandeve.com. Mm-hmm. Adam and Eve is offering 50% off just about any item, you guys, plus free shipping, which includes rush processing. Thank you. Ooh. And listen, okay, they offer discreet shipping, okay? Privacy is a priority, okay? Discreet shipping. So if you think, oh, there's a weird guy that lives across the street, I don't want him knowing what I'm ordering, guess what? He's not gonna know. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You guys don't wait. Better sex is just a click away, okay? That's 50% off one item plus free shipping. And guess what? You got the holidays coming up, all right? <sighs> These gifts will be great. Bring more pleasure and satisfaction into your bedroom. <sighs> all you got to do is go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy or anything you desire. Ooh. Just go to adamandeve.com. Use code viral at checkout. That's viral. V-I-R-A-L at adamandeve.com. This is an exclusive offer specific to this podcast, so be sure to use this code viral to get your discount. 100% free shipping and get it fast with rush processing. Code viral. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I have said on here, I think mm-hmm. this motherfucker walked in and Tilly was kind of barking at him. First things first. He goes, uh, okay. Is she going to do that all the time? Or like, is this a normal thing? Something along that, na- along that line. And I literally go, I thought we're done. He seemed yeah. so annoyed by her. And so like, uh, he, mm-hmm. he, he might've even done it. He was like, um, gave her dis- a look. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh. I'm sorry. You will worship these fucking dogs. If a grown man is looking at a teacup, mm-hmm. uh, oh, baby. a fucking teacup Miki, oh, with a fat w- one, a fat teacup Miki with pom poms in her hair, saying, uh, "Is she gonna be doing that?" I would, yeah. Oh, I said we're done, and then we we get around around the backyard, and he's complaining that our grass is too tall, and I was so should have said mow it. I was so done with him from the very beginning that. I was rushing through the tour. Yeah, you knew. I was like, it's not. And he, when he said like, oh, you're going to have to get, he, like complaining about our, I go, thank you for coming. Thanks. I mean, I was so annoyed. He so, was ridiculous. Sometimes I wish I had the power to be like, okay, just from that comment, I do not want, you know, some people are like that. I, I'm still not there yet. It's bad, dude. But yeah, we've, we've gone through the ringer on some roommates. That's for sure. Yeah, the man, Beth, has fallen into that relationship, Icky. But hers, yep. hers didn't last the... Yep. To that we got part. a roommate a- after that guy. Uh, we got a roommate and uh, Beth started fucking him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How long was it after? Biffy? Uh, about three months. Three months. Three months. That's kind of a long time, I feel like. If you know you're going to be fucking somebody, maybe, to yeah. hold out three months. Yeah. Yeah. He was being a little bitch. Oh, not wanting to fuck you? Well, yeah. I think, didn't he Taking have a girlfriend? Taking it slow? 
Mm-hmm. When he first moved in? I don't think so. Then they broke no, up. they had just oh. broken no, up, I think. No, I think he was just like, oh, I live with you. I don't want to yeah. get into a relationship. I, I understand. Like, I just want to sleep with you. And it's like, eat my pussy. <laughs> That's shut all. Up. Just shut up and crawl down to my room and eat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> eat my ass. <laughs> God. Yeah, dude, but only one girl you have had. I and- guess so. But I, I wasn't ever... Um, Oh, I'm only looking for a male. I'm, a, but I. It, it seemed like more men were applying or reaching out. Yeah. So that's kind of why why we went with that. But yeah. So that's cool. You have met lifelong friends from it. Oh, from we Craigslist, had. Oh, a- you know? absolutely. We had a roommate, Choi, that we're still friends with. Choi, I've never heard of Choi. <gasps> oh my God. He, uh, where was he from? Do you Korea? Remember? I think. I think he was from Korea. He, I think so. Oh, him and Greg still talk all the time. Mm-hmm. He's been wanting to come visit. You'll love Choi. I think he just Choi. went out to San Diego and stayed with Greg, didn't he? Not too long ago. Yeah. How and have I never heard of Choi? Choi. And when we were moving all of Greg's stuff, he had these two surfboards. And I was like, okay, what are we doing with the surfboards? You've never used them. <laughs> didn't know we had them. I go, let me put them on Facebook Market. He's like, no, those are Choi's. <laughs> And I go, what are they doing here? Because I remember them being, they were in our driveway for like two years. Mm -hmm. And I go, then what are they doing here? He goes, he gave them to me. I go, you've never used them. We're moving to Tennessee. Get rid of the surfboards. They went by. Oh, no, he's, they're still at the house. He's going to have Choi come pick them up. So Choi lives in San Diego. No, he moved to, gosh, Seattle. Seattle. Somewhere like that. Greg will never get rid of something. He Mm-mm. just became a storage unit. Those are choys. And guess what? Yesterday, I tried to get... I have like this old nasty pair of like white Crocs that are like... They're, I just don't... They, they're they not comfortable. My feet slide around when they sweat and they get real dirty. And I was like, I'm getting rid of them. They were in my get rid pile. Greg freaks out. Oh, what are you getting rid of these for? I go, I'm throwing them away. Leave me alone. Next day... I see his fucking mom. I see, I, see, I see his fucking mom wearing them. No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. We were sitting on the porch, and she was like, "Look, Maggie, Chelsea gave me these shoes." Chelsea. He can't get rid of. I mean, it, it anything. It kill and his parents are the same way. Kills him to get rid of anything. It's the weirdest thing. I wonder if that is like a just. I wonder why that is because some i'm with that with some things and like i collect weird things i'm i am a little bit of that like have a hard time or or something sentimental but no we're talking about if if brett had an old pair of shoes he didn't want anymore would you be freaking out wanting to keep them i have been freaking out because he has these shoes that are so nappy and i said get rid of those fucking things and he goes my grandma bought them for me it was the last thing she bought me before she passed but they are like tore apart yeah. don't have shoelaces i said okay no uh soul are they called insoles yeah. or soles yeah oh no Either. insoles and yeah just get rid of them yep or or put them up in the closet and look at them yep i feel you i feel you i'm a person that gets rid of stuff and goes through stuff and if i haven't used it in a while i'll don't I mean I donate a lot of stuff. He he acts as if my gosh, if we get rid of anything we've ever owned, the world will end. But you two are the exact opposite because you are fully get rid of like I even go through your giveaway piles because yeah, you throw out so much Some that it stuff. that it almost trips me out. But if I don't if I don't need it and it feels like clutter, I can't. It does not benefit me to keep. If it feels like clutter, it's got to go that clutter uh, in my head i go oh yeah i'll use that in 2027 uh-uh. um, mm-hmm. at a party yeah dumb no that's not me if i haven't if i haven't used it in however much it's gone it's gone bitch gone so well thank well, you thank you for calling in honeys love ya bye bye love hi honeys Alyssa here i was calling with a confession or at least Something I wanted to tell you guys that I used to do as a kid, even as an early teen, as disgusting as it is. Um, so I don't know if you had either of you have done this before. I had a bedroom that was a little far from the bathroom, and every time I had to pee, I would just grab like a big old cup 
whatever I had in my room and I would just piss right on in it and then throw it out my window. And then one time my stepdad was doing the yard and that back section where I used to throw them out my window was full of weeds. Nobody ever went back there until one day he decided to and he found all of my piss jars. I was in so much trouble. <laughs> have you guys, have either of you guys ever done anything like that? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Love ya. Yeah, I have, and I got one to top that. Yeah. I used to, um, when I lived with my grandma in college, I was so fucking lazy. And the bathroom was right next to my bedroom. Like, I'm talking... <laughs> I'm talking when you open my bedroom door. It's there. Two feet is the bathroom door. And I used to, if I didn't want to get up in the middle of the night to go pee, I would keep my towel. I've never told anybody this. I would keep my towel right by my bed and I would ball it up and I would sit on the, I would get up and I would just put it between my legs and piss in the towel. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude. What? Damn. That but would make a cat piss it didn't aroma. Drip. No, it all it soaked it. It all kept in the towel, and I would do my own laundry. So I would get up the next morning and just put it in the wash. And I did that for several months until I, until one day I literally was like, "What am I doing? What, what were you doing fuck? with all those piss towels?" The next morning, I would I would literally keep it there on the floor, which is disgusting because there was carpet. Oh <laughs> fuck. Dude, think of the smell of I your might have thrown it. I think I throwed it on all my dirty clothes and stuff. Like, I, you know, I'm nasty. I'm not that nasty, I don't think. I don't know. I might have. And the next morning, I would always do it the next morning. I would never, like, let it sit. I couldn't, you know, the smell or whatever. But I would get up the next morning and, and put just the towel in the wash. And after, I, I probably did that for, I mean, at least a couple months, a few months. And I literally remember one day I was putting it in the, in the, and you got to think, I was probably, like, 19 okay what 19 when this happened i was in college what the fuck i was thinking did you already say you were in college in yeah 19? yeah that didn't even register that flew past my head because i just imagined you being like 13 no. 12 so i remember i literally distinctively remember one day one morning put it in the in the washer and i thought just what you doing <laughs> right. do better and i do go better. i go just get up and pee and so i you know i will admit this i will admit well yeah you did you know mm -hmm. here's the thing Fuck. she used to go to bed at like seven though mm -hmm. and that house was old and the doors and the floors and everything creaky yeah. would be so loud yeah so that's probably why you did it that's why i did it <laughs> who did you have roommates you didn't want to wake up what was no. it I just didn't want to get up out of bed, although I got up to... I don't... It made no sense. Yeah. It made no sense. Damn, I don't think I ever... Y'all have never I'm done anything to, like that? I mean, I've pissed in bottles and sure, stuff, but like... when needed. Yeah, but to store something like that, I'm, I can't... I can't... No. Hmm. I didn't store piss or piss in a towel or... um. I swear we had a caller that called almost a year ago saying she did that pissed in towels yeah or something with pee and mm. towels and i think you were like whoa you were doing I it i probably lied <laughs> i was probably lying i was probably thinking don't out me don't out me i do not remember that wow oh my gosh yeah well you grew you did better you grew whatever i, I mean it's I your own up. towel it's my own towel and i washed it yeah so it's fine it kind of is though yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right, next call. This is the last call. Yep. Last call, Roy. Right? Roy, right, Roy, right, Roy, right, Roy. Right. Hey, long time follower, listener, all the stuff. I love you, all of you, really. I mean, you, like the whole crew, everyone, even Brett. Love everyone. Um, my marriage is great overall. Like, I, I, lo I love my husband. He's a fantastic partner, fantastic father. Um, we've been married since 2009, and our sexual life has been up and down, mostly due to me. Um, my hormone changes have been crazy. Uh, we were trying to conceive for two and a half years, succeeded. 
um, and then postpartum was a journey. And then, um, and I've, I've tried to go through a lot of self-help therapy, um, uh, for a while, like reading smut books was great. Smoking weed helped a lot. Um, just curious if you, um, have any other ideas just for me to get, you know, some feel good feelings for myself back. Cause I just, I don't feel it. Uh, I know that's vague, not a ton of detail. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have some ideas that, you know, really get your motors running <laughs> beforehand or something. But yeah, trying to work on myself and, uh, I want to do better. So yeah, just want to, your opinions on that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was a great, oh yeah. Deep. That was a good one. Love you, honey. Well, thank you for calling in, honey. It's definitely a definitely a vulnerable call. Um, at the same time, I feel like this is so common, and it's especially so common. You know, you're you've been in a relationship for a long time. That new fresh spark is gone. You got a family. You got work. Like you got a kid now. And also, it totally could be something as simple as just maybe a hormone imbalance. If you've kind of tried everything and you've tried a little bit of this, a little bit of that, that I would say don't, 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 um, skip out on maybe just going to, you know, like a hormone doctor. I don't know what they're called. Like something you can Google all the, like something like that. And, and just be like, Hey, could we just do like a blood test? I've, I have no libido. Um, not craving cock. Not, I'm not craving cock. Uh, something's wrong and I really want to be you know, craving it craving it I think too a lot of people don't realize how much like postpartum can weigh down on people mm-hmm. you know because they don't they think oh you had a kid da, da, da. they don't know what comes with it I don't even know but mm-hmm. just from I guess all the calls and friends and people telling me like it's a real thing I didn't find out till postpartum like till this podcast I think oh yeah yeah, so, and what, it can take freaking year, oh, a year to absolutely. even start feeling back to, like, yourself. Maybe even longer, who knows, but, yeah, that's definitely And that something. ties back into hormone, like, you, you've just had, like, the biggest, you know, like, I don't know how old her, you know, but even little kids, it doesn't matter, like, I, you know, your hormones can be just out of whack. It could s- simply be something of you know I, I would do if it were me I would do that it could be stress it could be so many it could be so many things or it's just something really simple too you absolutely know? I mean what get, absolutely. I'm trying to think of what gets me in the groove what gets the well, ma- the male callers the male callers the calling moaners. in and moaning <laughs> that will get you <laughs> that'll get me um damn she's tried the She's, marijuana she tried weed um have you tried the mushrooms <laughs> that those yeah. really those will get you in the groove get a little bit of try, I would try yeah i would try that you could try microdosing me and maggie were just talking about it too Mm-hmm. maggie said she wants to did you want to talk about that on here or you don't you don't give a fuck Those were Gary's snores. Sorry. I'm sorry. I could hear him from here and I had to put my mic down there. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I was just telling Paige before we started filming, I was like, I want to try to microdose a little bit. There was this lady on TikTok that I was following. Um, and she was like, it's helped me be a better mom. Oh, I hear wonders. I'm so much more patient with the kids. And I was like, man, the kids have been driving me fucking nuts lately. They've been fighting a lot. They fight nonstop. Yeah. (laughs) All I do is like get on to them. We did too. We did the exact same (laughs) shit, Maggie. I was like, man, let me try to microdose for like Mm -hmm. a month and see how it goes. And we're not talking about shrooms where you just are off your rock. No. No. Microdose means... Little. Little bit. Little bit. Little tiny bit. I don't want to be messed up at all. I'm telling you, it... It will, I know it sounds so dumb, like it will change your life, but it has opened up my freaking mind. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not lying. I can see better. I can see so vivid on mushrooms, and I can't see. Yeah. So that's weird. Colors are brighter, and it's not like I'm seeing things. Yeah. It just it makes you happier, more social, just good. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Strange that. Hundred percent. Strange that a little food can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that might get you in the groove. Some Nature. Of that. Yeah. Nature. Nature. It's like I said, the top of the. You know what I mean? Works wonders. Mm-hmm. Maybe Nature go works. ground. Yeah. Maybe go get a blowout. Put some makeup on. Uh huh. Eat a little shroomy. Uh huh. You'll some be shrooms. okay. Mm-hmm. Go on a little date night and feel. Yeah, feel it. Maybe put some copper in your bed. Maybe <laughs> you start using copper sheets. You know? Yeah. <laughs> You'll 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 get back in the groove, honeys. Absolutely, I would definitely try try the try the you know if you if that kind of scares you, or whatever. I would definitely go get your hormones checked out for sure. Yeah. you never know. You, you never got know. this. Spread them. You Just got kidding. this. We love, love you, honeys. honeys. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for calling in, and also you guys don't forget that we are here every Tuesday, and that we post on our YouTube every Wednesday. Don't forget that, and don't forget that we have merch. At the viralpodcast.co, monthly merch shops. Don't forget about us and don't forget about everybody in your life and call us at. Hold, hold on. And if you oh. got and if you got uh, space in your phone, go ahead and download those viral podcast episodes. Please do. It the helps world. us out. We don't know how, but we heard it does. Help us out. Take over the world. Please help us out. We don't know how, but please do. And call in with some good, juicy, juicy, juicy calls at. <sighs> Four four two seven 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 three 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 one. And always remember, you're doing great. You're looking good. And fuck what everybody else thinks. Get ready. We're going viral.